ideas. Birkbeck's free public lecture series where academics bring their research out to local communities around London, sharing the exciting and innovative work that happens at Birkbeck and opening up the world of research and university. The series is organised by Birkbeck's access and engagement team who support underrepresented groups of people to apply and succeed here at Birkbeck, University of London. This podcast will introduce you to the upcoming talks in the Big Ideas series. Our researchers will give you a preview of what's in store and hopefully entice you along to the event. If you like what you hear today and want to come along, you can find the details in the web link in the description of the podcast. We'd love to see you there. Today, I am joined by Professor Elisa Rafaela Ferre, a professor in cognitive neuroscience and head of school here at Birkbeck. She's here to introduce us to her research ahead of her talk in March. The Big Ideas talk is entitled The Psychology of Spacecraft. What happens to the human brain and behaviour in space? Wonderful. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. No problem. Uh, So ahead of your talk, I'd really love to understand a little bit more about the research that you do. And I know that that's a massive question, uh, which is kind of like, what is your research? But what is the research that has led to the findings that you will sort of be sharing in our big ideas talk? Sure. So my research focuses on the vestibular system, which is a set of sensory organs inside the inner ear. So every time that you move your head in space, the vestibular system is telling to the brain the onset, offset, direction and acceleration of the movement. In particular, there are two structures. One is called semicircular canal, which detect uh, its um, rotational acceleration. And the other structure is called the otolith organ, which detect uh, uh, linear acceleration, including the orientation of your head relative to gravity. So my research is based on vestibular physiology and vestibular neuroscience, and it develops into the space sector because what we are interested in is looking at how the brain represents gravity and in particular how these vestibular gravitational signals can shape human behavior. How does one conduct that kind of research? I can imagine it's a massive undertaking. Yeah, so over the past decade, I have been developing neurocognitive models explaining how the brain represents gravity and uses to influence our behavior here on Earth and potentially in outer space. So my research combines uh, cognitive neuroscience, experimental psychology, neuroimaging, vestibular physiology, as well as traditional space science methods, which are methods in which we can simulate alteration of gravity, such as parabolic flight or very big, chunky human centrifuges. And by combining all these methods, we can have an idea about how gravity shapes behavior. And in particular, what we are doing is merging these different methodologies in order to have very controlled experiment in the lab, as well as control experiment outside the lab in these space related, related methods. Can, can I ask, what does that kind of look like when you say Uh, You know, I know everyone would be wondering, what is a space related environment uh, or experiment? What what does that physically look like? So space related environment are type of experiments in which we can simulate uh, alterations of gravity here on Earth. And there are two different main methods that we are using. One are proper space methods, which are, for instance, parabolic flight and centrifuge. A parabolic flight is a plane, uh, like the one that you might use to go to go to holidays. But in this case, there are no seats inside the plane, and there are all different experiments. Now, during the plane, the, sorry, during the flight, the pilots are um, making some maneuvers, which are called parabola. So by having an acceleration of 2G, which is double the amount of gravity here on Earth, and then a period of free fall, which can simulate zero gravity, zero G, or microgravity. So our experiments are run into this tiny period of microgravity, which is about 20 seconds. So this is, for instance, an example of space method. 
what we do in the lab is to use other type of alterations of uh, gravity for a longer duration, which is very important. So, for instance, we use um, a 3D tilting table in which we can put people in different orientation as well as upside down. We use something that is called galvanic vestibular stimulation. We attach a couple of electrodes on your mastoid. Now, if you touch behind your ear, you can feel a bone. And the vestibular nerve is rather superficial there, meaning that we can put a couple of electrodes, we can inject current into the nerve, and this is going to simulate alteration of vestibular processing. And by using some type of waveform of current, we can mimic altered gravity experience. I know that it sounds quite Frankenstein, but believe me, it's it, it's a lot of fun. And what else do we do? Oh, we use uh, virtual reality a lot. So virtual reality is an interesting tool that allowed us to trick the brain and make people believe that they are in different space environment with different gravities, uh, although they are here on Earth. That's really fascinating. That's incredible. And how did you or how does one find this area of research? It seems so niche. And yeah, so I'm wondering how you found that. What was kind of your inspiration to be in this field? So my background is in vestibular neuroscience. So I have been always working since my PhD on vestibular processing and how the brain represents vestibular cues. Now, one specific signal that is transmitted by the vestibular organ is gravity. So it was kind of a natural flow to go into the space sector. And I've always been very much fascinated by how our brain, which I believe is the most beautiful object in the entire universe, can adapt to challenging situation. And I cannot think about a situation that is most challenging than space. So ultimately, looking at how the human brain adapts to space flight, for me, is just the most interesting topic of research that I can think about. And then can I ask you, uh, because I I find it incredibly fascinating, um, and I imagine those coming to the talk will also find it fascinating and love to learn about it, because it's not something that we're taught about every day. Um, But why is it uh, kind of important for the public to know this information? What could they gain from it? Space missions have shown that exposure to non-terrestrial gravities, such as microgravity or zero gravity on the ISS, International Space Station, or lower gravity, such as the one on the moon, leads to um, structural and functional changes in human physiology. The changes that have been reported are mainly involving cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, and the neural systems. But we also know that there are changes in terms of spatial disorientation, perceptual illusions, balance disorder, motion sickness, and poor uh, sensory motor control. Now, with an eye towards deep space human mission to Mars and the Moon, as well as space tourings, meaning that we can introduce non-experts uh, to weightlessness, it is important to get a better understanding into how non-terrestrial gravities influence our cognition. Now, that sounds, it's becoming so uh, much more a topic and so much more prevalent in kind of um, everyday conversation. And it, it might seem a silly question, but I, I am curious if you had the opportunity, would you take it to, to travel to space? Absolutely, yes. I would be very happy to go on the ISS, International Space Station. I would love to be on the moon. And Mm. one of the things that comes to my mind every time that I think about the moon is Earth Rise, which are the series of pictures which I strongly recommend that Apollo's astronaut took when they were on the lunar surface. And Mm -hmm. from on those pictures, you can see Earth that is rising. And I would love to have that view in real life. Uh, Going back to your question, uh, if the question is about going to Mars, probably not. It's way too far (laughs) and way too old. A really solid answer, I think. (laughs) Definitely. Do you think that there is enough consideration of the impact on the human brain when we're talking about kind of space tourism? That's actually a great question. So most of the systems that has been uh, studied, even in uh, traditional space models, such as astronauts or cosmonauts, are the muscles, the bone and the heart. 
So the brain has been largely neglected, probably because we are used to a space exploration model in which very highly trained people are going to go to space and they are in constant communication with ground control. Now, this type of model is not going to apply, as you say, in commercial space flight, as well as in deep space exploration. So if you think about um, space mission to Mars, now, there are going to be delays in communication that can go up to 20 minutes, meaning that astronauts would need to be much more autonomous of what they are right now in order to solve issues if issues come up. So we need to bring back the brain into this equation and focus more resources into that, because whether we want to make sure that space students are enjoying the experience, as well as the success and safety of deep space exploration, that's clear, important point. I could talk to you all day about it as well. It just seems like an endless area, especially, as you say, as it's an area with so much development. So specifically regarding this talk, uh, what would you like people who attend to take away? Oh, good point. So um, let me start with uh, Albert Einstein quote. Albert Einstein said that gravity is the first thing you don't think of. So I would like that you will start thinking about gravity in a way that probably you never thought about. But also I would like you to consider that space exploration shouldn't be only focusing on improving rockets and technology. We need to have a clear understanding of how gravity affects human physiology and in particular psychology and cognition in order to ensure the success of uh, space flight. I'm really looking forward to hearing more on March 18th um, at our Big Ideas talk. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and for chatting with me. Thank you and see you all on the 18th of March. See you then.